Holy cow, this is embarrassing. Actor Christian Bale was riding pretty high when his new Batman movie had a record-breaking box office performance last weekend. And on the eve of the premiere, as you've probably heard if you haven't been living in a bat cave, he got into a fight with his mother and sister and was arrested on assault charges. Just look at these breathless headlines. The New York Post, bad man, holy pow, Batman star beat mom. The Australian, Batman beats up his mom. The London Sun, Batman busted by boys in blue. But it turns out that not that much may have happened. Joining us now to talk about hype in the entertainment press in New York, Adam Buckman, television columnist for the New York Post. And in Los Angeles, Sharon Waxman, a former New York Times reporter who now runs the website waxword.net. Sharon Waxman, it's not clear exactly what happened with Christian Bale, but at worst it was a little shoving incident, and yet he was convicted around the world. He was convicted by the headlines, but not by any police. This is just more of the summer, uh, we need something to talk about doldrums in the celebrity press, but that gets picked up by the mainstream press. I was astonished to see the huge headlines all over the world. This is really much ado about nothing. Adam Buckman, I'll concede that it's probably not real smart when your big movie is about to premiere uh, to get into that kind of fight with your family, but the headlines, like the one in your New York Post, Bad Man and Batman Star Beat Mom, uh, isn't that a little over the top? Well, let's bear in mind that newspaper stories are the first draft of history, and sometimes those drafts get revised in the days to come. But, you know, it is true that some cops were called. He's the star of the biggest movie of the summer, maybe the biggest movie of all time. Seem to be a domestic dispute. Now, most domestic disputes do not make headlines, but when you're the biggest movie star in the world, they do. And let's not forget that the uh, temptation to use BAM and Zowie and POW headlines was a bit too much to resist. Well, for, I want uh, to see... That's, a, that's a good reason for making such a big deal out of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what the second draft of history looks like in New York Post, Adam, if, in fact, uh, he's acquitted or it turns out that He's there's acquitted. There's no charges, Howie. There's yeah. nothing going yeah, on. They, they question him at police uh, at uh, police station, and they let him go. I'm right. sure we wrote that story, too. I'm sure I could find it if I turned enough pages. I'll send All you right. a link. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I want to turn to uh, the, the Janet Jackson Super Bowl incident of four years ago. Back in the news this week, because a federal appeals court panel, there we see the picture, we're not going to show you the video for the 9,000th time, but federal appeals court panel this week um, uh, striking down a fine by the FCC against CBS. This was a $550,000 fine. Uh, the court ruling that this wasn't so pervasive as to amount to shock treatment for the audience. Now, just a brief taste of what a huge deal this was four years ago from our own show. Let's watch. All Americans were defamed internationally. When Justin Timberlake tore off part of Janet Jackson's costume and exposed her breast. I'm inclined to believe they planned it. All right, uh, Sharon Waxman, uh, I'm getting flashbacks for how a huge uh, mega story this was. Did CBS deserve to be let off the hook here? Yeah, no, I don't think CBS has let off the hook. I think that somebody ought to raise the question of what what uh, are the judgments being made by the FCC. I mean, just let's remember that not only did this make a huge hullabaloo in the media, this actually had ripple effects on the kinds of things that were uh, allowed to go on TV. It uh, contributed to Howard Stern eventually saying, I give up on all this, and he went to Sirius, um, you know, standards and practices offices at the broadcast networks were having to look again at what at what are what are the standards and what what is the appropriate lines for broadcast television so, and so for this to be a footnote now which it really really was i'm very glad you're talking about it because it barely made uh, any got any attention this week this court decision really should, means that we should take a look at how these decisions are made so adam does this uh, open the floodgates for more topless women on tv no not at all i mean these kinds of uh, fines have have been overturned in the past it doesn't necessarily open up floodgates um, for uh, women bearing their breasts uh, during the Super Bowl or anywhere else on TV. The real problem with the FCC rules has always been that they're very hard to define, they're very hard to, to enforce, and they're very hard to, upon scrutiny, uphold um, eventually in the courts. And, and, and this is a pretty common occurrence. Adam, I mean, parents were legitimately upset with young kids watching this, but the real incident lasted two seconds as opposed to the endless replays uh, brought to you by all your television stations. Well, actually, it was more like half a second. And, and I think the issue always was, and, and frankly, I've never seen this definitively uh, stated or proved or reported, did they intend to do this as something that would shock audiences and help sell records and tickets to Justin Timberlake and uh, Janet Jackson concerts? Um, you know, it's certainly possible that they did. I, I do not take, I do not, uh, hold, I would not doubt that. 
about people in that position, but nobody knows that. And so what it really looks like is something that was accidental and something that was beyond the control of, but, of the but network. But even if it was planned, I don't, I don't believe ahead. for a second that it was accidental. And I do believe that it was shocking. But at the same time, you look at the television landscape, there is worse stuff, as bad and worse stuff, at all times, uh, all over television. So it just seemed so arbitrary why we would pick or why the FCC would pick this one thing to come down like a ton of bricks, well, that's what bothered me about it. And definitely in this environment with all this media that Sharon cites, it's even harder and harder for the FCC, FCC to enforce anything and certainly for courts to uphold anything right. the well, FCC I don't, finds. I, I don't think there's any evidence that CBS knew about it in advance. And I just, looking back at it, boy, I mean, the television was really guilty of inflicting this on the American public over and over and over again. Want to touch on uh, some news that NBC made this week. We've all known that Jay Leno was supposed to leave The Tonight Show uh, next year. Now there's a date, May 29th, making way for Conan O'Brien. He could well jump to another network, say ABC, Sharon Waxman. Do you think ABC would be interested in getting Leno and then in that 1130 time slot just throwing Nightline overboard? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly, I think, what what looks like is very likely to happen. ABC has been courting Jay Leno. Um, I, I think it's a very funny thing that NBC is sort of booting Jay Leno out. It's not like he's doing poorly in the ratings. He continues to beat David Letterman in the ratings, as he has for years. So you have this kind of strange situation of him being shown the door from a, a network that he f has uh, been at for close to 20 years. But yes, I think that is what's going to happen. ABC has made very clear that they're very interested in having Jay Leno. They, uh, Jimmy Kimmel is willing to uh, accommodate that. And I think that we may well see Nightline now with the absence of Ted Koppel, of course, being uh, booted. And the irony, Adam Buckman, is that yes. ABC wanted to dump Nightline six years ago and trying yes. to steal Letterman. That didn't happen, but Nightline has since reinvented itself in the post-Koppel era and sometimes beats Letterman in the ratings, including the last two weeks. Uh, Nightline is actually, in, in my view, has turned into a very sprightly, energetic, and lively news show. In fact, in my opinion, better than it was in the waning years of Ted Koppel. But that won't be enough to save it. And I think even six years ago, ABC was interested in seeing where they could take uh, their late night time period um, into a new era. After all, now, Nightline has been on television for 29 years. It has a certain amount of value, but they have a very, very... Uh, great opportunity, as I write about tomorrow in the New York right, Post in my column, there. All right. to, well, to, hire, I, I to like, hire Jay Leno. I like Lennon, Leno, Letterman, I like Conan, but do we have only comedy on 1130? We'll have to see. Sharon Waxman, Anna Buckman, thanks for joining us. And if you've thanks. missed any of today's show, you can download our video podcast. It's available at iTunes or CNN.com slash podcast.